Has the outgoing Army Chief General Bipin Rawat veered dangerously into territory that a serving Army officer should steer clear of? Were his remarks on the protests following the Citizenship Amendment Act the most deeply political issue in the country correct to have made? What do the Army rules say about this? And more than just the rules, what about India's armed forces maintaining a fierce neutrality on all issues that are not a part of their area of concern? On the 31st of this month, General Bipin Rawat retires as Army Chief. He is tipped to become the Chief of, India, of India's def, uh, Defence Staff, the Chief of Defence Staff. That would be India's first CDS. But that announcement has inexplicably been delayed. Is the government delaying its decision till the last moment or is there a change of heart? Particularly since the post of CDS was notified by the Cabinet Committee on Security earlier this week. So Bipin Rawat in the news for all sorts of reasons. We've got a fantastic panel with us to look at this issue. Uh, Admiral Lakshmi Narayan Ramdas, the former Navy Chief, joins us. Major General Sudhir uh, Vombat Kere, the ex-additional Director General of Discipline and Vigilance in the Indian Army. Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan, the former Deputy Chief of the Army. And Colonel Ajay Shukla, uh, my former colleague, with us as well. Before we go across to discuss this, let's just listen in to what the Army Chief had to say. Leaders are not those who lead people in, in, inappropriate, in un, inappropriate directions. As we are witnessing in a large number of university and college students, the way they are leading masses of crowds to carry out arson and violence in our cities and towns. This is not leadership. A leader is one person who, lure, who leads you in the correct direction. Well, let me go straight across to Admiral Ramdas first. Um, Admiral, what sort of precedent do these remarks by the Army Chief make? I really don't know. Uh, whatever I had to say, I mentioned it yesterday. I repeat again that uh, the Army Chief is entitled to what he wants to say, but the rule book and our basic code of conduct, which has been in existence since a long, long time, which is based on history, tradition, and our own business of managing our own affairs, and leaving things to the government to do its affairs, have seemed to appear to have changed considerably. And uh, I believe that the Chief of the Army Staff has got his reasons, perhaps, to say it. But it is not correct. Because getting involved in uh, political uh, conduct is not a very nice thing. It's not a good example to set in front of so many, many of our officers and men who look up to you for correct leadership. If you disagree with the government, then it is your duty to bring them, to let them understand internally within the Ministry of Defense or wherever you are, that, look, you don't quite agree with them. But in spite of your advice, if they want to go differently, it is our job to obey. And if it's really too bad, as you know, it can happen sometimes when the president wants to disagree with the government. Right. He can use the army if required. And you will be a very biased army if you did something like All right. So, so Admiral, you make an important point, basically explaining that there is a process of communicating within the system. You do not, as Army Chief, make statements on a non-Army issue in public. General Kadyan, uh, let's just go through the rules of the Army. Article 21 of the 1954 Army Rules state that no person subject to the Act shall publish in any form, whatever, or communicate directly or indirectly to the press any matter in relation to a political question. This is the biggest political issue in the country right now. The protests arising out of the Citizenship Amendment Act. Why did the Army Chief get involved in this? Uh, Vishnu, let me first state the facts that Indian Army stands on two very strong legs. One is secularism. Other is a clear distance from political debate. And the rules are very clear. No officer in uniform is 
सपोज टू और इज अलाउड टू मेक एनी कमेंट्स इन पब्लिक ऑन ए सब्जेक्ट दैट इज पॉलिटिकल इन नेचर आर्मी स्पोक्स पर्सन सिंस डिनाइड दैट जनरल रावत डिड नॉट मैंशन द सी ए वाइल दैट इज थ्रू बट ई डिड से दैट एज वी आर विटनेसिंग सो द लिंक वॉज क्लियर एंड वॉट मैटर्स इज नॉट द ट्रूथ वॉट ई मैंट बट द परसेप्शन द वाइड परसेप्शन इन द कंट्री इज दैट आर्मी चीफ did make a statement pertaining to a subject that is politically controversial as of today and to that extent i think it was not proper for the army chief to have made those comments that he did uh, and this is neither in keeping with the army's traditions nor in keeping with the principles nor even the constitution it, it's not a right thing for a army chief to make a comment that uh, is uh, purported to be supporting the present government okay. then people will ascribe any motives to it which is unfortunate i don't think he had any motive maybe out of his exuberance he was talking to the youth he passed this remark but it was best avoided ajay um, there are circumstances in which an army chief or an officer can actually say whatever he wants to but that is with the prior sanction of the central government or any officer specified by the central government in this behalf is there reason to believe that the army chief could in fact have been authorized to make these remarks no there is no reason to believe that because yesterday the story that i did for business standard i asked the army spokesperson whether he had obtained permission or whether the central government uh, permission had been granted and the answer i got was no there was no permission from the central government uh nor does the army chief require permission because he was not speaking on a political issue he was speaking on leadership now it takes a very naive outlook to see uh, the ongoing protests as an issue of leadership rather than one of of uh, you know uh, an overtly political question it is as you just brought out the biggest political question of the day so the question that then arises is uh did the army chief speak on his own uh, of his own volition or was he asked by somebody to speak and either way it doesn't make the army chief look good because if he spoke on his own that amounts to the army meddling in politics which as general kadian said is completely contrary to the ethos of the army and if somebody told him then it amounts to politicization of the army right so it's it, either way it it doesn't look good and general rawat is a thinking general he's an in, highly intelligent uh, person i'm i'm just surprised that something like this could happen um major general bombard khere um uh, general rawat is uh, is is supposed to become is is not if not supposed and is likely to become india's first chief of defense staff his name has been spoken about more than anybody else yes the government has pulled surprises in the past uh, in terms of top level appointments including general rawat's own se- selection as army chief but these remarks uh, some would say couldn't have come at a worse time for general rawat uh, you know ahead of him possibly becoming india's first chief of defense staff would you agree Would you repeat the question, please? It's uh, general, the volume hear, is very low. Yeah, can you hear me now, General Bombard Kere? Yeah, it's better now. Yes. General, the timing of the remarks made by General Rawat, would you say it's unfortunate, coming as it does, just a few days before he retires, and perhaps a few days before he takes over as India's first Chief of Defence Staff? Uh, yes, uh, you're speaking about the timing of his remarks. Uh, you see there is no body there is no military authority superior to a chief of the three services so uh, if he is to say something it has to be with the approval of the uh, government of india and uh, if he has uh, said what he has said uh, then uh, and if the government uh, feels that uh, it is not uh, against uh, any rule that it is not political in character it would uh, appear that uh, the timing is very good because it seems to support the government's point of view uh, but besides that the controversy going on uh, my concern really is uh, what would happen down the chain of command now uh, different people see this in different ways obviously and uh, the rank and file of the indian army is uh, very much aware of what is going on 
they know what is being said by whom they know about the protests which are going on and uh, it would uh, it it could very well trigger a uh, it could spark off somebody saying uh, going to the press on some issue and uh, then down the line and then uh, the um, the commander at that level will be forced to take action against him all right in fact that's an important point admiral ramdas would you like to comment on this that a young officer or a young jawan seeing or hearing his chief make these remarks of a political nature in a public stage may feel that that is okay that is acceptable and in the process since in in, in our forces what the chief does as the father of the force in a sense is followed by the rank and file how how does this set a dangerous precedent for junior officers in terms of the way they should be behaving you know the question of behavior of officers or men <clears throat> is all governed by the appropriate acts navy act army act air force act and so on now there is no leeway within the service to do anything that is outside the act now it is applicable as much to the service you command which in my case i finished the command about 27 years ago i i think what we have to be sure of is that we set a right example if i expect my whole service to follow a certain act although i know that as head of the navy or head of the army or air force we have to discipline ourselves to belong to that act and never give an opportunity for the president to step in as the supreme commander because where else can we go so the chief will naturally be go to a president who we expect is a gentleman who is completely and honestly fair and just now these are all things which have changed over time i see and i think without the change in the act i'm sorry we cannot continue like this it's a situation which has to be addressed ajay um and the, the admiral has an interesting point the president is the supreme commander uh, the army chief reports to the president should the president not censure him in some form for these remarks in in breaching a tradition let alone the act uh why just the president i mean the government itself should have uh, the minister of defense should have called him in and just advised him uh, that this was a political act now vishnu there's a lot of arguments being made uh, that you know the army is the last bastion and if these leadership if these uh, citizenship protests uh, are led in the wrong direction then it will fall to the army to recover the situation and so on this is nonsense and there are much larger issues at stake here there is a reason for keeping the army a political assume hypothetically speaking the general rawat is appointed the chief of defense staff and another government comes into power at some stage down the line they are going to inherit general rawat do they want or do we want as a country to have a chief of army staff where the government views him suspiciously with having uh, you know obtained a political taint at some stage early no these institutions have to be kept above the hurly burly of day to day politics and the reason is that whichever government comes to power they should be happy with their army chief okay general wombat khere uh, general uh, rawat is not the first person in recent times in in fact the last week or so to be making these remarks the eastern army commander also made a few remarks uh which were controversial uh he 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 spoke about possible hard decisions against uh against left wing uh, protesters or individuals as a step the government may soon take so um is this something which is already becoming a bit of a pattern uh yes and i think the pattern uh, did not start with the eastern army commander making his remarks it is uh, much earlier it's about one or two years earlier when we have seen chiefs uh, service chiefs uh, making remarks which are clearly political uh, whether it's about what's uh, about domestic politics or about international politics uh, they are still politically colored remarks and um, uh, the uh, the eastern army commander has the chief of army staff uh, who is uh, the 
superior military authority and if the superior military authority does not think that the chief of, that the eastern army commander has made some remark which violates article uh, section um, 21 of the army rules then uh, there is uh, no way to go it seems to be uh, percolating all over all right it seems to be uh, percolating all over so that's a a cause of concern uh, general kadyan uh, the the statement or and this is largely source based from the army itself saying that the army chief didn't make a political remark uh, he didn't use the the letter caa wouldn't you say that this explanation was rather disingenuous vishnu as i said earlier what matters is the perception and not what what he actually intended to convey and the perception is that his remark had a political connotation. That is unfortunate. Uh, the other point that came up, which I would like to comment, is that should, should, should we assume that General Rawat's remarks was timed uh, so that uh, he could curry government favor to become a CDS? I think that is unfair assessment because the government has seen his work for the last three years and his contribution to the national security has been enormous. I don't think the government will change its mind in the last three days just because of one remark. So that may not be a fair assessment, but yes, you mentioned East Army commander, the change of trend starts from the top. If the senior commanders start meddling into politics, then it will pass down the line, and it is very dangerous, not only for the army, but also for the country. We have seen examples in the neighborhood when the armies get politicized, what can happen? Uh, we are the same human being, so let us keep the army totally insulated. Let this controversy now rest and not be debated anymore. Yeah. Ajay, one final question to you. Um, there are circumstances in which several armed forces chiefs have spoken when it comes to Pakistan, politics over there and how it fuels terrorism, for example. All service chiefs for, for the last decade plus, I can recall at some stage or the other, made repeated statements. So when you look at this 1954 army rules, it actually says that you can't say anything uh, linked to politics, right? But then there are circumstances in which we accept remarks by army leaders, for example, in the context of Pakistan. Yeah, Vishnu, that's a very important point you're making. It's a code of conduct that is instilled into every army officer from the time he joins. And it's a part of the institution. And when the institution sees it beginning to get diluted, and it's diluted from the top initially in acceptable ways like saying the Pakistan government is given right. to supporting uh, terrorism and so on. And then there's a creeping sort of, uh, it becomes okay after some time to speak about Pakistan. Then after some time you'll find it becomes okay to speak about leadership issues in, and street violence in India. And then before you can say Jack Robinson, it's starting to become uh, acceptable to talk about so all kinds of So it should all be stopped things. is what you're saying. It's a slow, creeping erosion no, but, but, but of values point, that has Ajay, to be stopped. Shouldn't the army chief, he's fighting a war in, in, on the line of control virtually. Should he not be in a position to say this is wrong, what's happening, terrorists coming in, they're fueled by the state. That's a political remark. But the army uh, traditionally talks with its guns. The chief does not need to say, we will stop terrorists, we will fight, we will retaliate against Pakistani posts. When you're doing too much of talking, it suggests that you're lacking in the action department. The army must talk with its guns. It must show by, by its intent, by its actions. There is absolutely no need to start making unnecessary statements. We've seen in the past, you remember when we had earlier chiefs, General Raina and General... Uh, uh, Bevu to mm. name just two they, of them. They never made. They never spoke remarks. out on these matters. The army spoke for them. Right. And that is the way it has to be. Right. Uh, last comment to you, General Wombat Kheri. Do you agree with Ajay that the army chief, the or Air Force or Navy, they shouldn't make any statements whatsoever on political issues, even international political issues linked to, say, China or Pakistan. Yes, I agree entirely with that. In fact, for the uh, army chief uh, or any service chief to say that, you know, we can deal with Pakistan or deal with China, they are there for that job. And there is no need to say that, you know, uh, beat your chest and say that uh, we, we can do this and we will give them a fitting reply and stuff like that. 
I don't think it's completely unnecessary in the international context. In the domestic context, it's entirely undesirable. All right. I just want to read uh, out a few of those important uh, quotes from General H.S. Uh, Panag, the former Western Army commander, where uh, you know he's given a couple of examples. He says the Indian military is not politicized like China and Pakistan, but the seeds have been sown in 2019. So General Panag's uh, remarks over there as well. And in the last five years, India has taken hyper-nationalistic stands on national security. Um, I think it's in that context that we have to understand distinction between the government and the armed forces has blurred. I think these are important statements uh, made by the by General H. S. Panag. Uh, Admiral Ramdas, last comment to you, sir. Go ahead, Admiral. You've got your hand up. Yes. Yeah. You see, I just want to say that the moment you start doing whatever has happened over this few years, and now we're discussing this recent thing. All I can say is that this is very infectious and dangerous. I had pointed this out even much earlier to the chief election commissioner. Please do not politicize state defense forces. Yes. This is not a good thing. We have never been done. I mean, I would say any further attempt of doing this would be very, very disastrous for this country. Yeah. I think All of us have spent a lot of time, a lot of effort. Yeah. And putting this nation together, yeah. we don't want to break it up. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a great Thank way, actually, to end this debate, that our political leaders also need to ensure that they don't politicize the armed forces. What we've seen in, during the elections, where there is political capital gained uh, on the back of the armed forces, whether it's surgical strikes or, or, or other actions, uh, is perhaps something that needs to be avoided to ensure that our forces remain independent in, 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 in spirit uh, and the law. And perhaps that's something we need to look at as well. One way or the other, a lot of people have a lot to say about the remarks made by the Army Chief, General Bipin Rawat, and whether it sets some sort of a precedent. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us.